It's super important that you know how to order rational numbers. A lot of teachers love to test this. In this question, we are asked to order our rational numbers from smallest to largest. So let's first look at notation. Now, this is the smaller than sign. So for example, one is smaller than two, or one is less than two. How do I know that? Well, the smaller pointy end points towards the smaller number. The bigger end points towards the bigger number. Then we also have the greater than sign. So for example, four is greater than three. How do I know that? Again, look for your pointy end. Your pointy end points towards the smaller number. The bigger end points at the larger number. Okay, so I have six numbers here, and my wise tip for you is that whenever you're looking at negative decimals or negative integers, negative numbers in general, the bigger it looks, the smaller it actually is. And a very helpful tool is the number line. So I have the number line here, smack in the middle, we have that zero. Now, all my positive numbers are gonna go on the right. So let's look for our positive numbers here. We have 3.45, 3.451, and 3.448. They all start with a three, so we look at the next decimal. The first decimal here is a four, so they're all the same. Now we go on to the next decimal. The next decimal here is a five, a five, and a four. So right off the bat, we see that the four is the smallest. So on the positive end, I have 3.448 being the next smallest number after zero. Okay, keep going, looking at the next decimal place. There's nothing there, so I'm gonna put a zero. Compared to this next decimal place, which is a one, so zero is smaller than a one, so my next number is going to be 3.450, and then finally 3.451. How about my negatives? Negatives is just the opposite. So if I look at my numbers here, they're the same values, but they're just negatives. So the largest looking one is 3.451. So that means that negative 3.451 is going to be the smallest number in this list. Then I have the next one, which is negative 3.45. And then finally, negative 3.448 is the closest to zero. So there you go, that's my list of numbers in order. If you were asked to use the greater than or less than symbol, you would just put symbols, the less than symbols all the way through so that this guy is the smallest, this guy is the largest. Okay, part B, we have the infamous fractions. I know some of you guys are shaking in your boots. Don't worry, whenever we're comparing fractions, we have multiple ways of doing that. But I think the most straightforward way is actually converting them to a common denominator. You can also draw a picture, use a number line, use fraction tiles, circles, or even a calculator to help you out if you're allowed a calculator. But I'm gonna show you the common denominator way because a lot of teachers expect you to know this method. Okay, for common denominator, let's look at all the denominators we have. Well, we have some threes and we also have some fives. So the easiest way to find the common denominator is to do three times five. And it turns out that three times five, which is 15, is the least common denominator in this case. You don't need the least, you just need a common denominator. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is convert all of these fractions into a denominator of 15. So taking my first fraction, one third, I need to make the bottom into a 15, meaning I need to multiply by five. Now, the golden rule when it comes to converting into common denominators is whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So I need to multiply the top by five as well. So I end up with five over 15. Now I'm gonna pause the video, use this method, convert the rest of the fractions into a common denominator with 15. So hopefully you got this list of fraction after you converted them into common denominator with 15. If you didn't get this list of number, pause the video, double check your work, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so now we have this list of fractions here. Again, we can use a number line or think in terms of number line. Positive numbers go on the right, negative numbers go on the left. So I'm actually gonna start with the negative numbers. Which one is the furthest left? Well, that's gonna be the biggest looking negative number. And the biggest looking negative number here is negative 12 over 15, meaning that I have negative four out of five to the left of my order, it's the smallest number. Then in my list of negative numbers, it goes negative 10 out of 15, then negative five out of 15. So I'm gonna write negative two thirds, the original fraction, and negative one third, the original fraction. Okay, whew, done with negatives. Now let's deal with positives. Out of the positive numbers, which one is the smallest positive number? Well, five out of 15 is smaller than 10 out of 15, which is smaller than 12 out of 15. I'm just looking at the numerator, right? So we have five out of 15, 
10 out of 15, and 12 out of 15. Whenever I think fractions, I just think number of slices of pizza versus the whole pizza. 5 out of 15 means I get 5 out of the 15 slices. 10 out of 15 is 10 out of the 15 slices. This will generally help you visualize which one's bigger. Okay, part C, we have mixed numbers. These mixed numbers also have fractions, so they follow the same rule that we did for fractions earlier. So looking at my numbers, I have a negative 3 and a bit, negative 3 and a bit, negative 4 and a bit. So the smallest number, since they're all negative, the smallest number is going to be the biggest looking number, which is negative 4 and a bit. So that's my smallest. Then how about with my other two? Well, now I need to look at the fractions. This time, I'm not going to convert them to a common denominator. Instead, I'm going to show you how to do this using a picture. So 5 out of 6, what I'm going to do is I'll take a circle, cut it into 6 equal slices, as equal as I can. Now I'm going to shade in 5 of them. Okay, this picture represents 5 sixths. Now, do the same thing for 3 fourths, 3 quarters. So I draw a circle, split it into 4 equal slices. Now I'm going to shade in 3 of them. So if these were two pizzas, which one would I have more pizza slices in? Well, this one, right? Because it has a smaller gap. So 5 sixths is bigger than 3 fourths. But since these are negative, it works the opposite, okay? So five, uh, negative 3 and 5 sixths is smaller than negative 3 and 3 fourths. And this, my friend, is the order of these three numbers. All right, part D, we have a mix of fractions and decimals. The easiest way for us to compare them is to convert our fractions into decimals. So taking a look at this fraction, to convert it into a decimal, quickest way is to take a calculator, 1 divided by 5, and you will get 0 0.2. Now, if you know of another way to do it by long division, feel free to pause the video and give that a try. Then we have negative 3 halves. Again, taking 3 divided by 2, I get negative 1.5. And finally, negative 8 over 6, that's going to give us negative 1.33 repeating. So I'm going to pause the video, go ahead and order these numbers in the right order from smallest to largest. So hopefully this is the list of numbers that you got. If not, double check this video and feel free to leave me a question. Hey guys, my name is Jess, the head of education here at WISE. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you want to see the complete course, please check out the link in the description. You can also go to one of our playlists to keep learning for free. If you want us to cover a specific course or a specific topic, please leave us a comment below. We post new videos every week, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the new stuff.